Hi, my name is Mark Webb, and I would like to speak to you today about hemodialysis. Most nurses have little or no experience with dialysis or dialysis patients. I'd like to pull the curtain back a little bit so that you can become familiar with some of the basic ideas of dialysis and what it's like to be a dialysis patient. Hopefully this information will make you aware of what their life is like and what some of their health needs are. In a minute we're going to go and look at a dialysis machine that's actually running, but I need to provide you some background information first. Chronic kidney disease is any condition that causes the kidneys to no longer function properly. 26 million American adults suffer from chronic kidney disease and millions more are at risk. The two main causes of chronic kidney disease are uncontrolled diabetes and uncontrolled hypertension. Between these two conditions, this accounts for two-thirds of all chronic kidney disease cases. When a patient is diagnosed with acute or chronic disease, they must begin dialysis in order to replace some of the functions that the kidney can no longer perform. Without dialysis, the toxins in the body would build up and it actually can eventually kill the patient. In addition, if fluid is not produced by the kidneys and excreted in the form of urine, then that fluid backs up in the body and will eventually damage the heart and the lungs. There are two common forms of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. This video is strictly for hemodialysis. What is the life of a hemodialysis patient like? Well, when they first come into the clinic, either a nurse or a dialysis technician access their bloodstream. This is done with uh, two 15 gauge needles that are placed into a surgically created fistula or a graft. One of the accesses for the arterial flow out of the patient and the second is for the venous return flow in, back into the patient. Those without fistulas or grafts can have their bloodstream accessed through a central line catheter. Once accessed, the patient is hooked up to a dialysis machine. The dialysis machine will remove wastes, salts, and excess fluid. The average dialysis patient comes to dialysis three times a week and runs for four hours. Now that's like sitting through two movies back to back and they don't even get popcorn. And think about this, a dialysis machine is attempting to do in 12 hours what the kidneys normally do continuously over 168 hours. Needless to say this is actually very difficult on the body and a patient normally feels very drained when they leave and that's because they've been drained. That's enough background information. Let's go and look at a dialysis machine in action. This is a Fresenius 2008 K2 model dialysis machine. As you can see, there are two blood lines that run from the patient. One is running from the patient arterial line, and it comes up through here. This round device here is a uh, pressure sensor, and it monitors the pressure coming from the patient, and we don't want it to get above a certain rate, uh, and so we monitor it there. Then this is the blood pump that is, that is actually drawing the blood out of the patient, and it's running at a rate right now that will process 400 milliliters a minute. Okay, that's pretty fast. All right, it runs through here, down, and then up into the dialyzer. Now, the dialyzer, uh, the fastest thing to the explanation is that it's kind of like an oil filter, except that if you can look really close, you can see microscopic little straws. His blood is running through those straws. Okay, and up the, out the other side. All around those straws is a fluid called dialysate, and it acts as a semi-permeable -mem uh, membrane, and it allows the toxins and extra fluid to come off of the patient through here, and then out through um, these ports here. Then the blood comes up here. You see another pressure pod. This one is for arterial pressure. Comes here. This is basically a chamber that helps. Uh, it's a safety chamber for air detection. 
because we don't want air getting back into the patient's bloodstream and so that monitors it and makes sure that there's not any excess air coming in to the patient. Runs on down and then back into the patient. Okay. On the screen here you can see various things. We talked about the arterial pressure that that pod was measuring. His arterial pressure right now is, is a negative 180 and the cutoff point that we're looking for is negative 250. We don't want it to, to exceed that. Venous pressure 160 and it can run up to oh, 250 and it is okay. You can see here's how much of his treatment he has completed. This is that transmembra transmembrane pressure we were talking about that allows the fluids to pass back and forth uh, through the membrane in the dialyzer. Ultrafiltration profiles and sodium variance profiles, those are just some settings we can use to help the patient from experiencing side effects like cramping. His goal was 5,000 milliliters today. So far he is uh, got 30 minutes, eight minutes left. This is how much we're taking off an hour. This is how much we've taken off so far. This is the flow rate that it's just kind of a general flow for the dialysate running in and out of the machine. Uh, a temperature setting because when blood comes out of the body and runs through a machine like this, unless it's heated back up, it's gonna be cooled off too much for comfort for the patient. And so the machine actually has heaters inside for keeping the blood at a nice te warm temperature. Uh, and conductivity has to relate with some of the various chemicals that are used in dialysis, um, bicarb, things like that. Uh, and those are kind of the basic items that you'll find on a dialysis machine. The ma machine itself is not really high tech. It's pretty low tech, except that the, all those pressure things and, and the, the basicness. It will take the uh, patient's vitals every 30 minutes. Here's the last time it took the vitals. That's his blood pressure, his pulse, and that's the current Welcome time. back. To summarize what you've just seen, a patient's blood is removed from their body, ran through a very sophisticated filtration system, and they're going to return to the patient. The dialysis filters primarily remove waste products and excess fluids. While hemodialysis treatment can be very efficient at replicating some of the kidney's functions, there are several side effects to be concerned about. The two most common side effects are hypotension and muscle cramps. These result when too much fluid is taken off or if fluid is taken off too quickly. Other side effects of hemodialysis could include itching, sleep problems, anemia, wound diseases, hypertension, fluid overload, pericarditis, hyperkalemia, and complications of their access sites. In addition to these physical side effects, Dialysis patients also have to deal with psychological, emotional, and social issues that result from being on hemodialysis three times a week. Fortunately, most dialysis patients are able to adapt to the dialysis schedule, and few have any significant side effects. As a result, most dialysis patients are able to work, enjoy their families, and do most of the things that they enjoy doing. Thank you for your time and attention, and I hope that this has provided some insight into hemodialysis and the life of a dialysis patient.